Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some propagating. Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. So, welcome back to Tape Playing With Scissors. I should not be doing this. Uh, so as you can see, just by looking around me, my plants are pretty overgrown at the moment. And so I like, I weirdly have a lot of runners. So like, this is what a runner is. So a lot of my skindapses have runners on them. Um, and like a bunch of other plants are just putting out like super long vines with no leaves on them, which usually I really don't mind because some people like absolutely hate it. I honestly don't really mind. I think that they're putting, there's like a combination of things that can make plants do this. Sometimes it's like, if there's not enough light, they'll put out runners or if they're like trying to climb up something, if it's a climbing plant and it wants a moss pole, it'll put out runners with no leaves. But this is literally from a plant that's like very far away. This runner is ridiculous. Uh, so I'm gonna go around and cut up these runners. I am sort of gonna do an experiment of sorts where I am going to chop up the runners by node and then toss them all into a propagation box and see what grows because depending on what it is, it might be able to grow new plants from it. So cutting off the runners might turn into propagations. Like my Raphidophorta cursiva has a giant runner on it that could possibly produce little babies of those, which would be awesome. I don't know about these Scandapsis, so like this one too, right here. That's a runner from my Scandapsis Silver Splash. This is a runner from my Scandapsis Exotica. I don't know if those can produce things because I'm not sure if they have nodes, they might just have aerial roots, but I'm doing an experiment. We're gonna see what happens. I also really need to trim up my string of hearts, which is these, and then there's more over here because those are getting sort of ridiculous. <laughs> and this one I have like looped up and back around and stuff. So basically today I'm just gonna be chopping stuff up. So come along with me. Okay, so I'm gonna start over in this region. This is that exotica that I was just holding on to. This runner is crazy. So I think my game plan is gonna be that I chop it right below its last leaf. So on this one, the last leaf that it put out was here. Can you see that? Um, so I'm gonna chop just right below that, I think. So like right there. Cool. Now we have this whole big runner that I will chop into smaller pieces in a bit. So I'm gonna put this to the side. And now I'm gonna do this Refetophora decursiva here, which is a beautiful plant. Let me show you what this plant looks like. Wow, so beautiful. I love it so much. Uh, I don't know why it's putting out this runner, but it has this like two foot long runner at least. So same thing, I'm gonna cut it right below its last leaf. And now we have this big stick. Ah. Now up here is another runner. Um, I don't know what I wanna do with this one because it's actually putting out a leaf. Let me grab this. So this is a Jade Satin Skindapsis. Absolutely beautiful. And it put out this that has one leaf on it here, which is actually being really cool. And it's putting out speckling sort of on the side like a Skindapsis does. And then it's putting out this leaf here. And I think it has a new growth point there as well. So though this is a pretty long runner, pretty, pretty long, uh, it does have some good some good leafage going on. So I think I'm gonna leave this one. Leaf this one. Okay, so similar situation with this one. It put out one little tiny leaf here, but other than that, it hasn't put out a leaf for this long. So this is my Silver Splash Skindapsis. So I think I'm going to cut this one as well, just right under there. Look at how cute that little leaf is. So I'll propagate that one. Who else wants to be chopped? There's a lot of vines hanging from my ceiling that I need to reattach. Uh, so I think I'll do that as part of this video too, because they're sort of hanging down a little bit wildly. Let's do this. Okay, this is my string of hearts situation, which, oh my gosh, I just noticed a peduncle. 
Wow. Hold on. Let me bring you closer. So I believe it's on this Bretonii, which is absolutely beautiful. I love this one and it's sun stressing incredibly. But look, this part is going over here and it has a little peduncle. Wow, my Hoya flowers just going off. It's also currently attaching itself to this terracotta pot and then going up that way. That's slightly concerning, but it's fine. I'll let it do what it wants to do. <laughs> oh my God, there's another one. Look at it. Can you see it? Come on, camera. Oh, it's not focusing, but I swear. There's another one right there. Wow. And wait, I think my Hoya Bella has one too. There's a mealybug. It's fine. But look. Peduncles! Okay, so the situation with the string of hearts is that there's one regular form string of hearts here that goes down this way. Where does it go? It goes down this way. And then it turns and it goes this way. And then it goes up around that one. And then it goes down this way. And then it gets tangled in here. Then I have a variegated string of hearts, starts here, goes down <laughs> this way, turns a corner this way, then down this way, and then a piece of it is going up over this light. <laughs> so I need to chop these back, very much so, because I don't want to pull this off of the top shelf, which is something that I have done before, and it's really annoying to wake up in the morning covered in dirt because you pulled a pot off of off of a shelf so i'm going to i don't know where yet i'm going to cut it but i'm going to cut them and then propagate them okay here's this okay so the annoying thing about this is that now i have variegated string of hearts and regular string of hearts all tangled together so I think I'm going to go through and try to detangle this. Uh. Okay, now this is what I have. <laughs> it's still stuck to this thing. Uh, I think I want to propagate so that I have like a bunch of long strands of variegated string of hearts and also the regular ones because I have some that I have already propagated. Let me check what I'm doing. I have some that I've already propagated that... I did like the butterfly technique thing where, um, I don't know what my words are, where it's, uh, it's each leaf that you propagate by. Um, and those are okay, but I would really like to have some long, some long string of hearts. So if I can detangle this enough to get some strands, that would be awesome. I think that literally took me 20 minutes and I only did the variegated form. Um, but now I have, let's see, I have all these one, two, three, four, five, six strands and they're all pretty dang long. So I think I'm probably, mm, I think I'm probably gonna chop each one in half. So then I can have like 12 long-ish ones because these are really, really long and they grow relatively quickly. This is really a great angle. So I think that I'm gonna cut each, one's, each one of these in half. It was interesting because there was a few of them that had branched off and the last strand that I detached had branched off t like two different times. So it had three total strands coming off of it. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to do this without tangling it up on itself. But I'm going to do this half, cut this here, cool, so this is, and I think I'm just going to put these in a glass of water and 
think I'm gonna purposefully put them like on top of each other, but not try to detangle in any way. Okay, wait, how long is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, this one I'm not gonna cut because it's just a little bit longer than those. And this one, same thing. Wait, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna stack them all and then I'll cut them again. Okay. Also, yes, I just spent 20 minutes detangling them just to put them on top of each other. <laughs> That was maybe not my best idea. Okay. And now I'm gonna take these and cut them in half again. Mm, there. Like that. So now it's a nice full strand of those. Also, yes, we lost a bunch of leaves. <laughs> They are very delicate and come off very easily. I was trying to be as careful as possible, but the plant will grow new stuff from the place that it cut off. So this is good. I can put this just in a jar of water and then it'll start rooting up at the top here. Okay, I decided I don't want to deal with this right now. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Anyway. Uh, I have a couple more runners that I am going to cut. Let's go. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is my a Monstera Peru cutting, and it shot out this craziness. So I'm going to cut this back just right at the top. Nice runner there. And then who else do we have here? I'll grab these hearts. The tangled hearts. There we go. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do with those. Oh, and then in here I had a few also. Oh my gosh. Okay, so in here I have a Skindapsis exotica that's shooting out runners. Some of those. Oops, this one had some leaves on it. My bad. Okay. Anyone else? The Cebu is putting out some, but they're not crazy yet. I think that is going to be it for the cutting of the runners. Uh, now I'm going to chop them into pieces. Okay, I think I'm going to edit this together in like a cool, like, chop choppy sort of way. So. Mm. I'm also not keeping track of what any of these are. This also might completely fail or it might be awesome. So. Okay, so now I have this big pile of what I'm pretty sure will be mostly failed propagations, but things like this, the Raphidophora decursiva, has a little tiny growth point there. So that will definitely turn into something. Uh, I'm gonna let these sit and I'm gonna go hydrate some sphagnum moss. Okay, so I have a thing of sphagnum moss that is currently soaking up some water. And so while that is doing that, I'm going to attempt to adjust the vines on my ceiling. Um, I only have, well, I feel like it looks like a lot, but I only have this many more hooks and I just dropped one on the floor. And so I'm gonna try to attach the vines to hooks that I've already put up there. Hopefully, um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so the ceiling vines are good for now. I'm liking the way that they look. 
they are more solidified. I need to treat this pothos for mealybugs. That needs to be a thing that I do. But this is what I did. It's kind of interesting because this one over at the end has reached the other corner. And so I think that once it's going down there currently, I think once it gets long enough, I might have it go like in the corner of, how do I make that go? <laughs> in the corner of the wall going like this way, which I think would be really cool looking. So that is what that is doing right now. I have the variegated string of hearts cuttings in water now. I'm gonna put those by the window so that they get plenty of light to propagate themselves. Uh, I'm still waiting for the moss to hydrate and then I'm gonna toss this stuff in. I think I am gonna deal with the regular string of hearts cuttings. Uh, not right now. So if I input time lapse of me doing it, it's me doing it while doing something else later. If I don't, I didn't do it. I'm gonna deal with them some other way. Okay, I'm standing here over this, which is a Tupperware filled with the string of hearts and I don't know what to do with it. What would you do? I know you can't talk to me. I wish you could. I wish you could tell me what I should do. Ugh. I really don't want to detangle it. That feels like a lot of work. Should I just put it in a sphagnum thing? Like just put sphagnum in the bottom of this? It looks kind of cool though. Like just put sphagnum in the bottom of this thing and seal the lid and call it a day. <laughs> like what do I do with this? Oh my God. <sighs> it's also frustrating because like I know that a lot of people really want this plant and I love this plant so much. Oh my god, I need to... I'm just gonna put a wet paper towel under it and then put it on top of that. That's, that, that's fine. That's called dealing with it later. Yeah, now I need to put the wet sticks into this sphagnum moss that is still hydrating. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take a break and we'll come back and finish this up. Alrighty, we have our moss that is nice and hydrated. I'm just gonna fluff it up a little bit because it gets a little dense in the hydration process. And I should have brought a rag because my hand is going to get all dirty. Um, it's just moss. It's not dirty. So yeah, here we go with this. And now I'm going to fill in this box with all of these things. And I'm going to make sure that the ones with leaves on them um, and any other ones. I can't decide. Should I take off the caterpill? I think I am. I'm going to take off the little dead caterpill that comes on all of them because... Once you remove that, you can clearly see the growth point that's on it. See that? That light spot is the growth point. So I'm going to just separate the ones with leaves. Do da, do da. And then just like toss everything in, I think. Let's see, this is the Peru stuff. Even the little Perus, Perus looks like it has some sort of light point in there. So I'm not sure if that's actually a growth point, auxiliary, auxiliary bud or what. So I'm just gonna like move stuff out of the way and just like toss these in here. Cause there's a lot and this box is not very large. So we're gonna probably do a couple layers of this. So this first layer is going all the way down to the bottom. I don't think it's a big deal if it's like touching the bottom plastic as long as it has some moss that it's exposed to for water and something to grab onto. <laughs> okay. This is literally just going to look like a salad. It's 
some of these refitophoras in here. And these have been sitting out for a good amount of time, which is important so that they don't immediately get root rot or that they don't start to rot from the like exposed parts of them. And I'm not doing this very exactly. I'm just kind of tossing them in here. You know what? Let's just do the whole thing. Do all of them. Toss them all in here. Not on the floor. Okay. Then I'm just gonna mix it around. This is just chaos, is what this is. Just wanna make sure that everybody has their own space as much as possible. And then I will put these sort of on top, the ones with the leaves, that they have their own little space. And I really don't like put these in in, I just kind of like make sure that the little aerial root that they have connected to them is touching, is like inside the moss. But okay. Well, that's going to be that. This is what it looks like. Um, I don't know if you can see the bottom, but there's a bunch in there. So I'm going to pop a lid on this. I don't know where I put the lid. I'm going to pop a lid on this and I'm going to put it by some grow lights. And yeah, that's going to be that for a while. And we're going to see what that ends up being. I think I'll probably give it like a couple months at least. Uh, to just chill and do whatever it wants to do. Uh, this might be a controversial opinion, but when I do uh, propagation boxes, I just kind of leave them sealed. Like I have a propagation box that I think I put together before I left for camp. I mean, I know I put it together before I left for camp. I put it together a long time ago and it's just been sitting there, like not completely popped closed sealed, but like mostly sealed for months for at least three if not four months so and it works pretty well I've had relative success with most of my propagation boxes and when I say that I am now thinking and I think I've only ever made one but anyway um yeah I'll update this in a couple months and see if anything happens and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please consider pressing the like button or subscribing to my channel or both if you're feeling fancy i believe we just passed 6,000 subscribers which is super exciting um every I, i'm just having so much fun with this channel and just being able to like hang out with you guys and expand our audience and talk about plants and just hopefully have like a little happy moment even when we're doing stressful things but this was fun i had i had fun with this video today um but yeah i hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you soon goodbye